Last week we talked about our responsibility and more importantly, God's. To continue on that thought of God's responsibilities, it's important to learn to be humble and to cast our cares on the Lord. Often we struggle, I think, to believe that God really wants us to do that. Wanting us to be not only bringing our troubles, but also our concerns to Him. Yet He clearly told us exactly that. In, in 1 Peter 5, he said this, So humble yourselves under the mighty power of God, and at the right time he will lift you up in honor and give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. The New King James puts it this way, Therefore humble yourselves under his mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care about him, for he cares for you. This word casting used here, is referring to throwing, hurling, arising, sending, thrusting, driving out, and expelling. I like these words. These are very forceful terms, and often you find the Greek doesn't translate very well to English. So get capture that. Capture that these are forceful. This is a forceful word. It appears to me that it's difficult for some of us to believe that God considers worry a serious issue in our lives. Back to that word casting, and that we can em give it emphasis. Perhaps you need to become extremely spiritually forceful about giving your care to God and then abiding in a secret place of the Most High under His shadow of protection. I still struggle with guilt at times and even condemnation to the point where I, I am at times mentally and spiritually drained and I will forget that I have been made righteous in Jesus Himself. And at times there are days where I can I just can't accept that. Maybe that is you. Your feelings, the attack of the enemy, and so on can lead to, to just times of guilt and condemnation yourself. So what I'm to, trying to tell you today is to get fed up and start fighting against that set of feelings. Reject that group of lies. Why? Because Jesus has made you righteous. And you need to make up your mind that you're going to have what he died to give you. And we need to resist the devil and he will flee. Get mad and react in holy anger. When the enemy tries to get you to a, to a, 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 a to carry your own burden, to carry your own burden of care, we need to stop the thing in its tracks and say, no, I will not carry this care. I am casting it. I am forcibly throwing this care upon the Lord. We have all have you know specific issues that must be deal with, dealt with we all have specific spiritual th troubles and struggles that need to be settled once and for all we need to give them to God so that so they don't hinder us for the rest of our days and so they don't affect our walk and they will that we won't miss out on the fullness of joy and we will not have any peace and we will never find any rest you see guys it's the fullness of joy peace and rest and that is where God is, is providing. He is providing you a fullness set of joy, a fullness of peace, and a fullness of rest. And it comes from God. And it's right there for you. Back, back to First Peter, the word there, uh, care, means to draw in a different direction. When you're stressed, we need to be drawn towards God and to the peace that He provides. Because that's that's where we find rest, and that's a safe place. Pastor Andy Lynch is a, a war veteran of many recent conflicts. He wrote a devotional series called First Peter, PTSD, and Me. He believed that this text we're reading today is how God helped him to be drawn in a different direction and to find a place of trust in life. And in spite of his condition, that is still very much with him, he could find that place of trust. He wrote this thought, Hi, my name is Andy and I have PTSD. I'm sharing this little piece of medical history with you as an encouragement, not a plea for sympathy. You may be asking, how can this possibly be encouraging information? Well, I'm glad you asked. You see, I am convinced that God has blessed me with PTSD so I might learn to trust him more fully. And what I want to do today is point you in a passage often used to encourage those who are anxious for one thing or another and provide three ways I'm going to apply that passage in my life. I do this with my hope that I might serve as an example when you feel anxious. That is right from his series on, on 
on that devotional of First Peter PTSD and me. And I know for a fact that you want to enjoy God's provision. And I know when I trust in God for my safety, whether temp- temporary or eternal, I am reminded of his great love for me. If God demonstrated his love by sending Christ to die for me, then surely I can rest in the knowledge that he has, you know, my best interest in his mind all the time. In the light of this text, it is, it is reason for me to be humble and it is reason for me to trust God with all my problems in the first place. In other words, because God cares about me, I actually have nothing in this world to be concerned over because God knows what I need even before I discover for myself, Matthew 6, 8. In closing, I want you to know that that I have... I have made this process maybe too easy and, and too simple and, and uh, too, too uh, I don't know, easy to work through uh, for each and every time you get anxious when life is pressing down on you. And I'll tell you this, without drawing on spiritual power, it's, it's more than not easy, it's impossible. So if you're listening to my thoughts today, it really doesn't matter what you worry about, turn to God. Go to a place where you can fully trust and have confidence in. And lastly, trust in him for your salvation and then continue to trust in him for everything. Cast your cares on the right resource because God is there and he will see you through it. And I'll see you next week when we talk about holy fear. I love you. I so appreciate you taking the time to listen each week. Pastor Jim Wells, Crossroads International Church, South Ottawa, Massachusetts. And I'll see you next week when we talk about holy fear. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.